My God. I, oh my God. Oh my God. No, nah, bro. This is easily the greatest anniversary we have ever gotten. Look, the reveals and stuff for the second part of the Dragon Ball Legends 5th anniversary just ended. And oh, oh my God, guys. It's, it's finally happening. They fed us with all this information. Holy crap. So the Dragon Ball Legends reveals and stuff special edition 2023 part two has just ended. And oh my God, they gave us so much with part two. It's actually insane. So we got a whole bunch of other events coming back. Um, some of which are new, but in this particular case, I'm not going to focus on any of the events because what we're receiving in terms of the characters is way more important than any event that they showed off. Granted, don't get me wrong. The, the events that they announced are actually very, very good. But this right here, holy. So what I'm going to do first is show you guys my reaction and then we'll break down everything else. It's time. Superhero, of course. Yep, that new Gohan! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! It's time! Like, I love his uh, model of the game, too! Okay, comboing! Gone. Alright, Gohan! Alright, my go! Yes! It's time! Wait, Power Awakening Piccolo? Another one? Wait! Is he a revival unit? Or like transforming one or the other? Wait, is this revival? No! Oh, that's a yes! Yes! That's that go! Gone! excited yeah whoa superhero it's wreaking havoc okay red ribbon army magenta what's so max what no 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 nah, quit playing with me no nah, quit playing with me bro no Oh no, not like that though. You did great, number two. 
Not like that, man. Oh my god! <laughs> no! No! Are you really showing it now? Yes, everything you just saw is what we're going to be receiving for part two of the Dragon Ball Legends fifth anniversary. We are getting a brand new Dragon Ball Super Superhero Gohan. We're getting LF Orange Piccolo. We are also getting LF Gamma 1 and 2 with, of course, the LF being Core Breaker. And we're also getting Magenta, where when he gets defeated... Cell Max appears. And to top it all off, we're also getting Super Saiyan Blue Shallot. Oh my god. I am still mind blown from everything that we just saw. So I am extremely excited for part two. Now, before I continue, I do just want to note that for the... To get both you know like uh gohan and piccolo as well as gamma one and two and magenta they're actually going back to a format they've done years ago where they had separate banners so if you want to get piccolo and gohan they have their own banner and if you want to get gamma one and two and magenta they have their own banner but on the bright side though they brought beast gohan back and beast gohan is on both banners but if you do the gohan and piccolo banner you can get beast gohan and the old power awakening piccolo and if you do the gamma one and two and magenta banner you can get beast gohan and pan so again two different banners so you can pick whichever one you want but at the very least you have a high probability of getting beast gohan if you have not you know gotten him already but i just wanted to get that out the way now let's break down what they can do so starting off with gohan so of course we have gohan he's a red unit he's a support type which is based on this version of Gohan, it makes sense because this is not a transforming unit. I thought it was going to be that one, but it's it's not. It is what it is. Anyway, of course, tags, Sun Family, Hybrid Sand. Z ability 3 plus 2% to uh, special move damage inflicted by episode sagas from the movies and plus 30% to episode sagas from the movies. Tag Sun Family or tag Hybrid Saiyan base strike, at, uh, strike and blast attack during battle. So, there's that. Um, again, obviously him buffing movies, which is going to be extremely important, especially because, you know, you compare that with Gogeta Blue, who's also a movies unit. So there's that. Unique abilities, applies the following effects to self upon landing a strike or blast arts hit, activates once, restores key by 50. That's big. <laughs> that guarantees that uh, obviously like if there's no like outlying circumstances, then you'd be able to use any card in the game if you just land a strike or blast arts hit. You know because you get that 50 key so that's good you also draw a special move next which means that as long as you land strike or blast then for the very first time anyway then you're able to follow up immediately with the special move because you'll have enough key to use it and then plus 30 percent to the next special move arts damage inflicted cannot be stacked activation count resets after character switch which means that Every time you take Gohan out and then you put him back in battle, that ability resets, which means if you land another strike or blast, you're going to get another 50 key, you're going to get another special move, and you're going to get the buff again. So that's actually really, really freaking good. It gives him offensive capabilities while being a support type, which is fantastic. Anyway, continuing with unique abilities, applies the following effects to itself according to the number of times this character has been on the battlefield. So again... Like I said, those activation counts that gives you the key and the special move and the damage buff, those reset every time he goes in. But if you keep on swapping him out, then the first time you get plus 50% to damage inflicted, cannot be canceled, and activates once. Second time onward, restores health by 10%, and third time onward, increases arts card draw speed by one level for 10 timer counts, cannot be canceled. So the more you um, swap him out and get him back in there, then the more damage you'll be able to deal while also being able to pull more cards, which is good. The following effects occur when this character is switched to standby. Restores ally key by 30, which is great. 
plus 20% to damage inflicted by allies for 20 timer counts, plus 30% to allies' health restoration for 10 timer counts. Seals enemies' strike arts. The sealed arts cannot be used for 3 timer counts, which is good. That's really, really good, especially because there's a lot of units out there that have blast armor. So that's actually pretty good. And especially the health restoration, because obviously Piccolo is a new summonable unit. He's going to be on regen. So if he has any type of health restoration um, abilities, then of course, that's really going to benefit him a lot. And then of course, damage buff helps everybody. So that's uh, also good. And then of course, we got uh, the main ability, restores own health by 20%. Restores allied tag Sun Family or episode targets from the movie's health by 15%. Shortens allies' substitution counts by 10. That is big. Again, to give you guys a bit of perspective, when Tapion released last year alongside Dragon Fist, you know, Goku, he has an ability where if the enemy activates Rising Rush, his sub counts get knocked down by 10. What does that mean? You could literally, like, have Tapion in. And then afterwards, you swap him out to whatever unit, and then uh, the opponent can instantly activate Rising Rush, and you can throw Tapion right back in. This, being able to knock down sub counts by 10 is massive. Like, more often than not, apart from other circumstances that might add a bit of extra time on top of that, that means that you would be able to get literally anybody in. Anybody. That is massive. And just imagine, right? Like, let's say um, there was, like, extra timer counts added on Goku and Frieza, right? Because obviously Goku's son family. Let's say that their timer counts is at uh, 15 for whatever reason. Just throwing a random number out there. And then you pop your main ability with Gohan, right? And then afterwards, for whatever reason, like, you're getting combo, then the opponent activates Rising Rush. Again, they knock down their timer counts by 7 when Rush is activated. So by that point, you'd be able to get them back in, right? That's really really good anyway continuing inflicts all enemies with actually downgrade minus one arts card draw speed level for 10 timer counts which is good um inflicts all enemies with actually downgrade minus 50 percent to key recovery for 10 timer counts and inflicts all enemies with actually downgrade plus 15 to all arts cost for 10 timer counts requirement 15 timer counts must elapse so um you get to sabotage the opponent's card draw speed um you get to lower their key recovery and you raise um their arts cost which pretty much would prevent them from being able to combo efficiently and then the final unique abilities plus 10 percent to damage inflicted every time an allied episode saga from the movies or tag sun family is hit with an enemy's arts attack up to 50 percent so quite literally just throw in somebody from sun family or saga from the movies and they're just gonna get a damage buff which is good it's actually really really good okay now moving away from gohan we have Piccolo. So, of course, it's Piccolo Power Awakening, but he does revive into Orange Piccolo, which is nice. And this is actually extremely beneficial for a particular reason that I'll get into after we break some things down. So, again, Piccolo Power Awakening. Of course, he's an LF unit. He's a green melee type. His tags are Super Warrior, Regen, Merging, and Namekian. Z ability 3, plus 30% to episode targets from the movies. Tag regen or tag super warrior base strike attack and defense and plus 15% to tag regeneration base blast attack during battle. So there's that. Um, also, it's nice to see like regen get more buffs and all that good stuff. Apply oh, unique abilities applies the following effects to self from battle start until transformation plus 40% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled, reduces damage received by 10% for 60 time accounts cannot be canceled, and increases arts card draw speed by one level for 60 time accounts cannot be canceled so you can pretty much keep them in the battle for 60 timer counts and have a decent a decent chance of dealing effective damage if you will that that's the best way of putting it but all that is definitely not bad okay so continuing with special arts increases arts card draw speed by one level for five timer counts okay well there's that um apply his attribute upgrade shorten substitution count by three to self for 10 timer counts cannot be stacked that's nice okay not bad unique abilities has a special cover change against strike arts attacks comboable with special move arts pretty self-explanatory and then the best part revive all right revive with 100 health and transform into orange piccolo when own health reaches zero 
If own health reaches zero due to enemy self-destruct attack, the character will not revive. And note, right? Apart from like self-destruct, because there's, I don't think there's many units in the game that are currently in the meta right now that even utilize that. Like, I mean, we do have like some Majul Vegeta's and whatnot, but even at that, the only character that has the ability to consistently nullify revival is the Blue Beerus. He is the only unit in the game that can nullify revival with a special move specifically. And he's a blue unit. So trying to land that on Piccolo is not going to work out very well. And not only that, that Beerus is not really in the battle like that. So it is what it is. But if somebody was trying to nullify his revival, probably not going to work out. Anyway, now we have Orange Piccolo. Unique abilities, nullifies abnormal condition, paralyzed, cannot be canceled. Thank the Lord. Oh my, y'all have no idea how, much, how happy I am to see that he nullifies Paralysis. There are particular units in the game that go rampant with that ability, one of which that comes to mind is Rosé. So now you can get hit by a special move from Rosé, as long as, you know, Orange Piccolo's in, and it means nothing apart from the initial damage that you'll take. But at least you won't be paralyzed, thank goodness. Anyway, nullifies unfavorable element factors for damage sustained for five timer counts every time an enemy uses a strike Blast, Special Move, Awakened, or Ultimate Arts attack while this character is uh, on the battlefield, activates once. Effect and activation count resets after character switch. So pretty much um, for like the first initial combo, it, you'll be element neutral um, if you're in a disadvantageous situation. So not bad, not bad. Anyway, charges own unique gauge every time when hit with an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the battlefield. The following effects occur once Unique Gauge is full. Activates once. Restores own health by 20%. That's good. Uh, plus 30% to special move damage inflicted cannot be cancelled. Minus 15 to own special move arts cost cannot be cancelled. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for 15 timer counts. Cancels own abnormal conditions. Reduces enemy key by 50. Destroys all of your enemy's cards. Reduces enemy's Dragon Balls by 1. And seals all enemy's main abilities for 10 timer counts. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, um, <clears throat> so, um, of course he has a unique gauge. A uh, lots of units have been getting that as of late. And this is actually not bad. It, it activates only once, but it's still pretty freaking good. It's, because what it says, it charges every time you get hit with an arts attack. So it's a relative defensive um, unique gauge, kind of like how it is for um, Ultra Broly where, you know, if you attack him, his unique gauge fills up, and then once it's full, like, you lose your vanish and all sorts of stuff, right? But, um, yeah, being able to nullify your element factors for 15 timer counts is actually really, really good. Destroying your opponent's hand is fantastic, and also knocking down their drag mouse helps as well. And plus, the best thing about this is that you're able to not only destroy your opponent's hand, but you seal their main ability. Which means that, for example, if they're last man standing and, um, you know, they try to combo you, trying to get rid of Orange uh, Piccolo, they've already used Rise and Rush on one of your other units. They, they just, they have to be able to land that combo and then get their main off. They either have to use the main before your unique gauge fills or they are left pretty much defenseless, apart from if they have Vanish or whatever the case may be. Um, in scenarios where if there's somebody in the back end that could, like, force draw a card, then that can kind of get around it. But um, even at that, like, you do reduce the enemy key by 50, but then there are units that when they go in, they get key. So there are some workarounds, but for the most part, though, that's actually a really, really good ability. So his unique gauge, we'll have to see how it is um, when he actually releases, but so far it actually sounds pretty good. Now we have the main ability, applies attribute upgrade, shortened substitution count by two to self cannot be canceled, which is great. Applies buff effect, nullify enemies, special actions that activate when changing cover to self for 10 timer counts. So, you pop your main, you nullify cover change, which is good. And of course, requirements, 10 timer counts must elapse. Special arts, for a short period of time, counter will activate upon enemies' melee tap actions or strike arts while in fighting pose. So, quite literally, exactly how it works for uh, the transforming gear. Applies the following effects to self when counter activates. Draw a strike card next, which means you can immediately follow up. 
Applies buff effect, nullifies enemies, destroy card effects for 10 tower counts. Ooh. Okay, so he can't get his cards knocked down. That's nice. Applies buff effect, nullifies enemy special actions that activate when changing combo for 10 tower counts. Um, and of course, combo will strike, blast, special move, etc. So, um, yeah, you activate your special arts. If they hit you while, you know, you're in your pose with either a tap or a strike, um, you get a strike arts card, you can't get your cards destroyed, and you nullify cover change. That's great. And then, unique abilities has a special cover change against strike arts attacks, comboable with special move. So, that's it with Orange Piccolo. It was a lot to break down, but... He's actually sounding really, really good. And the best thing about all of this, um, which I mentioned at the very beginning, but I want to talk about now, is Orange Piccolo is a revival unit. A revival regen unit. Pair him up with Ultra Kid Boo and Red Cell, and you probably have a very scary team to fight off against. Like, very scary. Not only that, but... um. Because uh, you could probably throw Zamasu in there too, if you wanted, as like the blue unit. Like, this is actually a pretty massive buff for that tag. So, again, I would say start looking out for regen teams because Orange Piccolo might have just helped that team out significantly. Okay, now that we're finally done with Piccolo, because that was a lot to break down, we now have the next two units. So, we're moving on to Magenta, which I never saw this happening at all but we have magenta so he's a sparking wait i'm sorry I, this just clicked in my head again charles for anybody who's into voice actors charles martinet is the voice of magenta but he's more renowned for being the voice of mario luigi wario and waluigi so that means that we got mario not only in a dragon ball movie but in a dragon ball game <laughs> oh my god so yes we got mario in a dragon ball game okay anyway magenta he's a sparking unit he's a green support type um his tag is powerful opponent what you know what i understand i understand because magenta himself absolutely not android uh i i think i get what they're going for with that because obviously magenta he, he cybernetically enhanced his body but I don't think that they're actually going with Android because of that, because he's definitely not a powerful opponent. I think he gets those tags based off of Cell Max, because it's kind of similar with what happened with Tapion and why he's on powerful opponent, because of Herudigarn. So I think the tags are based off of Cell Max, not off of uh, Magenta. Anyway, that's besides the point. Z ability 3, plus 30% to episode sagas from the movies, um, tag powerful opponent or tag Android, base strike and blast defense and plus 15% to tag Android Blast Attack during battle. Unique abilities, applies the following effects to allied tag powerful opponent, tag Android, or element green according to the number of timer counts elapsed from battle start. 40, uh, 40 counts elapsed plus 15% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled. 80 counts elapsed plus 20% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled. Effects activate even if this character is defeated, which is actually really, really good because, I mean, powerful opponents and Android is, I mean, sure, right? It's the element green that matters the most, right? The reason why that matters so much is because just by default, you could pair him up with Rose, right? You can pair him up with Ultra Rose and he would be able to benefit off of this. But more importantly, you can pair him up with Revival Piccolo because he's also a green unit. So, and again, these effects still activate even if Magenta is defeated. So those two units can really benefit off of something like this, or in truth, any green unit, because he's a color buffer. So that's actually pretty solid. And uh, let's see, also applies the following effects to allied tag powerful opponent, tag Android or element green if this character is defeated. 40 counts elapsed, restore his health by 15%. 80 counts elapsed, restore his health by 20%. I, I think he might actually become a staple for like Mono Green. It, it could actually become a possibility because those passive like abilities are actually uh, really good. Anyway, Special Arts applies buff effect, nullifies enemy special actions that activate when changing cover to self for 10 timer counts. 
which is good. So he nullifies cover change. And nullifies enemies restores health when it reaches zero effects when this character attacks for 10 timer counts. Magenta nullifies endurance? Wow, I was not expecting that. This this is mind blowing because this is magenta, but okay. He he nullifies endurance. Alright. Main ability plus 50% to damage inflicted for 60 timer counts cannot be cancelled. Increases own arts card draw speed by one level for 60 timer counts cannot be cancelled. Requirements five timer counts must elapse? Dang! Alright! Like magenta doesn't sound half bad. It actually sounds pretty good. And then unique abilities has a special cover change against strike bro what? this is magenta like even gohan didn't get a cover change this time around that's crazy to me okay wow and then unique abilities deals major explode damage to the enemy when this character is defeated if there is a remaining battle member in addition the damage inflicted will also be dealt to enemy members on standby the damage from this attack cannot cause the enemy or enemy members on standby to be defeated. If this character is defeated by enemy self-destruct attack, the effect will not activate. This effect will not activate in hyperdimensional co-op or full power battle. So, um, this sounds exactly like how it was with Herudagar. Because, again, it functions the exact same way. Which is, I'm, I'm fine with because... This is pretty much saying when Magenta is defeated, Cell Max appears. And Cell Max deals major damage to the opposing side. So, again, you can't defeat any battle members with it, but you can probably deal some massive damage, if, especially if uh, circumstances are favorable. So, yeah, um, we got another unit that deals damage after they die, which is fantastic. And for the first time, we actually have Cell Max in some sort of way, shape, um, or form in Dragon Ball Legends, which I am completely all down for. Now, we get to the last unit in these banners, and it is none other than Gamma 1 and 2. LF Gamma 1 and 2 specifically. So, of course, they're an elf unit. They are a yellow unit, and they are a ranged type. The only tag they're on is Android. Oh, all right. Oh, well, there's that. Z ability 3. Plus 30% to episode socks from the movies, or tag Android, base blast attack and defense, and 15% to tag Android, base strike attack, or strike defense during battle. Sorry, plus 15% uh, specifically. So there's that. Unique abilities Gamma 1 knocks back enemy to long range if a cover change is performed against their blast arts attack. Activates during assists, comboable with special move arts. Gamma 2. Nullifies enemy's attack if a cover change is performed against their blast arts attack, activates during assists, and then applies the following effects to enemy when special or when using special cover change, destroys all of your enemy's cards. Wow. All right. And then inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade minus two arts card draw speed levels for five timer counts. Wow. Okay. And then it shows on the side full abilities not shown. Um. So pretty much, if you want to be offensive, use Gamma 1. If you want to be a saboteur, use Gamma 2. So, but luckily they both cover Blast Arts, so you don't have to really worry too much about cover changing Blast. They both do it. It's just one is able to follow up with the special move, the other one can't, but he sabotages the opponent heavily. You knock down all of their cards. That's scary. That's definitely a scary scenario to be in, especially if you pair that up with like uh, Orange Piccolo. That's going to be crazy. Anyway, moving on, we have Special Arts. Gamma 1. Draw a Special Move Arts card next. Activates once. Restores own health by 10% and key by 50. Reduces enemy key by 40. Seals enemy Special Arts. The sealed arts cannot be used for 10 timer counts. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus 20% to damage received for 15 timer counts, which is good. Again, he's the offensive side of Gamma 1 and 2. Um, Gamma 2. Draw a special move arts card next, activates once, so he also draws one. Restores own health by 10% and key by 50. Okay, he also does that too. Um, plus 15% to damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Oh, okay. Well, he actually gets uh, more of the damage buffs then with this uh, special arts. Um, reduces enemy key by 40 and cancels enemy at, uh, attribute upgrades. So, okay, so in that regard, they are both offensive. But um, 
I guess when it comes down to using the special skill, you're going to want to use it with Gamma 2 just because he deals more damage. But, I mean, it, it depends on how you want to go about it. But either way, though, both options don't sound bad. Switch ability. If Unique Gauge is not full, restores own health by 10% and key by 40. Plus 20% to damage inflicted cannot be cancelled, activates once. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for 3 timer counts. Applies buff effect, nullifies enemy special actions that activate when changing cover to self for 3 timer counts. Requirements, match uh, max gay or I can't speak, max switch gauge when used by Gamma 1, tag switches to Gamma 2. When used by Gamma 2, tag switches to Gamma 1. So again, this is the switch ability if the gauge is not full regardless of who's in and who you're swapping to this is what will happen but switch ability if you need gauge is full gamma 2 enters core breaker preparation mode yes i i i've said this for um a, a little while now that us getting tag super saiyan 3 goku and super saiyan 2 vegeta is one of the most important releases we've had in a while just because of how the unique gauge functions and because of that much like with kamehameha or transcendent kamehameha preparation mode we now have core breaker preparation mode the following effects occur and own unique gauge gradually decreases while this character is on the battlefield restores ally health by 10 percent shortens ally substitution count by 10 reduces enemies dragon balls by one so you do have the ability of preventing the opponent from using Rising Rush by default when it activates because of the fact that you knock down the Dragon Balls by one. However, this could easily be like worked around because of the fact that there's so many units out there that have like card draw speed and all that stuff. So they can probably get it back very, very quickly. The following effects also occur if there is a defeated battle member. Restores own health by 25%, which is great. Nullifies unfavorable element factors for damage sustained for uh, 30 timer counts. And reduces enemies dragon balls by one so um it says uh, the following effect occurs if there is a defeated battle member um so if i'm understanding this properly if these guys are last man standing then you would knock down their dragon balls by three so because again just from entering the preparation mode you knock down the dragon balls by one but then it says the effect also occurs if there is a defeated battle member. And obviously there's three units that you can use in battle. So if they're last man standing, then if I understand this correctly, you will be able to knock down the Dragon Balls by a total of three, which will actually be pretty solid. Because, of course, like one Dragon Ball knockdown for each battle member you've lost. Um, but if it's not like that, then it's just a total of two, so it is what it is. Gamma 1 will be controlled while in Core Breaker Preparation Mode. If this character is sealed while in core breaker preparation mode, it will be canceled and own unique gauge will disappear. If this character is defeated while in core breaker preparation mode, it will be canceled. So literally how it is with, um, you know, transcendent coming on me off preparation mode, it works the exact same way. But of course, seeing that they have the preparation mode, this is how you activate their LF. So if you're trying to act, uh, land LF, you have to activate that mode and land that on the opponent and wipe them out with it. Switch ability activates core breaker, which targets the entire battlefield once own unique gauge reaches 0%. Applies the following effects to self upon activation and deals supreme impact damage. Tag switch to gamma 2. Restores health by 15% plus 20% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled. Restores vanishing gauge by 100%. Nullifies unfavorable element factors for two timer counts. Nullifies enemies restores health when it reaches zero effects when this character attacks for two timer counts. So again, that's the switch ability. Again, you activate core breaker, which hits the entire battlefield. And then um, it says, you know, apply the following effects to self upon activation and deal supreme impact damage. You tag switch to gamma two, and then you get everything else. So yeah, um, again, getting that banished gauge uh, restoration is actually really, really good. And of course, being able to nullify endurance, uh, you know, even uh, nullifying element factor is also good too. Half of the damage inflicted will also be dealt to enemy members on standby. So that means that, for example, right? Let's say that um, you land this on, we'll go with a purple unit, right? You land this on a purple unit and from full health, it obliterates them, right? It says half the damage dealt, which means that 
if you land this on a purple unit and it one shots them the enemy team for the, whoever's still alive will start off with half health that is powerful <laughs> very powerful anyway the damage from this attack cannot cause enemy members on standby to be defeated understandably so this attack cannot be evaded with a vanishing step of course much like how it was for goku and vegeta this attack cannot be cover changed against Owen Unique Gauge will disappear after this attack hits. This character's switch ability will become unusable until the end of battle after this attack hits. In full power battle, this attack will not activate during a dual break and will instead activate once the dual break has finished. Cancels abnormal conditions that restrict this character's movement, including immobilize, hev uh, heavily immobilize, flash, and faint when they attack. Okay, so um, apart from like the very straightforward stuff, just note that let's say that you use this unit and you know you manage to activate core breaker preparation mode you land core breaker and it doesn't activate lf or maybe you're just doing it in the midst of battle while the opponent has like many units still alive once it connects gamma 2 is dead gamma 2 is gone so you cannot use him after that move connects understandably so because core breaker saw gamma 2 died so again you got to be very very careful while using this unit right because again you land it and gamma 2 is gone but there is also one thing to know about this unit that is um different from other tag units again this is tag gamma 1 and 2 tag gamma 1 and 2 but they are straight up a yellow unit that's very important to note so no matter what you'll be advantageous against purple units apart from some that can reverse their element factors but you will always be weak to red units apart from certain circumstances that make them neutral so again no matter if you're using gamma one or you're using gamma two they are a yellow unit no reverse yellow no other element factor they are a pure yellow unit this is the first tag unit that we've gotten that is a pure element factor so that is actually going to be very interesting to see how that's going to play out and then the very last thing we've broken down all the characters that actually got details but we got the confirmation guys it's time i told you i'm going crazy i'm going crazy we got the confirmation of super saiyan blue shallot and we also got to see his art in well not really like in the game but they just showed us his his card art and it looks incredible of course yes we will be getting access um access to super saiyan blue shallot but not immediately we'll be getting access to him in eight days so after like the banners drop and we get to use all the new units and all that stuff and of course in order for you to get super saiyan blue shallot you have to clear part 14 book 5 of the main story and you will also get 1,000 Z power for Shallot, which also means he's finally breaking through to the red stars. Thank goodness, which means that by the end of story mode, we should be able to get Shallot up to eight stars, which is really, really nice. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to get him up to nine stars, but hey, I'll take it. Either way though, this was a lot to break down. This is a fantastic follow-up from part one of the anniversary and if this is how they're following up part three has to be absolutely insane but i am extremely excited for all of this you guys already know i'm going crazy on those banners you guys already know that when that story mode drops we are covering that frame zero but i do want to know how excited you guys are for part two of the drag Mall legends fifth anniversary in the comment section below but with that being said, I'm Inakuba, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.